want to do today is go over just a couple of tips on how to make your FDM style molds shoot exactly like your SLA molds. So this is going to be cradle to grave. I'll show you exactly what we start with and exact, that's not true. I'll show you pretty much what we start with and where we're going to go. So first things first, uh, the difference between SLA and FDM is materials. And so here is an example of uh, basically like a squid material. So this would be used with a center pin and you would end up making, you know, a squid, kind of like that, after you cut it. Um, and what that is, is these are resin printers. These resin printers use a laser and um, a mirror to reflect light and it cures it up to, I want to say, two hundredths of a millimeter resolution. So very, very fine resolution, very, very good uh, finish on your baits. FDM, on the other, chan on the other hand, is actually going to use a um, it's actually going to use a plastic spool that gets extruded through a nozzle and it builds layer by layer. And so you can see on here what it's done is it's built from this way all the way up. And so you can see those layers, and those layers will end up coming out in the bait. Now sometimes it'll even be a little bit uglier. You can see this one; the layers are even even finer. And then finally here on the inside of the bait, you can see we've shot this and actually what's happened, this is, this is what came out, okay? So this is what we're starting with and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to try and improve it. So I want you guys to think about this, think all the way back to wood shop, just like when you started with huge surface imperfections, what you're going to do is you're going to start by sanding it out. And then we're going to move to a character or to a chemical smoothing and then what we're going to do is we're finally going to seal it. Okay, so how we're going to do that, the very, very, very first thing we're going to do is actually we want to make sure that there's no warping in these parts. So heat and plastic, that can be a pretty tough combination. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and try and just smooth these out real quick. For the purpose of this demonstration, I guess this is going to have to work. So all you're going to do is just take this and face down. The idea is what we're going to want to try and get it flat. So give me a little bit and I'll work on that. And I'll meet you back in a sec. All right, guys. So uh, we we went ahead. We used the the sandpaper. You can see. Let me see if I got it before somewhere. No, these have all been uh, sanded. And so now you can see we've kind of taken the top layers of those lines out. Um, and so, but remember, this this wasn't to get this smooth. This was all this was to do was to get this surface flat. So we want this surface and this surface to line up as flat as possible. And so I should have shown you before, but now you can kind of see these are lining up very nice. Um, and so now when we actually clamp them together, we're going to get a really nice clamp and um, a we should cut down on flash. Uh, we'll go over a couple other things, but on to the next step. So we got them flat. That was the very first step. And now what I want to do is I want to go in and I want to take care of some of the imperfections. And so here... You know, if you look at another one of these, you can see these huge striations. And now you're thinking, you're like, oh yeah, just hit it with the sandpaper. Okay, yeah, that's fine. That's a great idea. But remember what I said, FDM builds layer by layer. So guess what's underneath that layer when you take, take get rid of the top one? Another layer. And so what you're going to do is you're just going to keep running into these problems. Um, and so what I advise you to do is go through with um, a Dremel. Try and get it as smooth as possible. We're not really trying to smooth it out on the micro scale yet. All we're trying to do is get the really big peaks and valleys out of there. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hit the Dremel with this and I'll check back with you in just a little bit. All right, so uh, we got everything Dremeled out. I went through, I actually opened up the sprue just a little bit as well. Um, you can see we're, we're pretty nice and smooth but we still have a couple of little valleys and peaks there. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the um, chemical smoothing portion of that. We're going to take a small piece of clay, and so I have that right here. You're just going to dip it in the acetone, get it wet, and then you're just going to start buffing it out. Um, it's just like, just like waxing your car. And you can see as I, as I do that, it's leaving it really nice and smooth, really nice and shiny. And don't touch that with your finger because it'll actually end up being um, super sticky. It's got to dry all the way. And the reason I use the clay is because it will it will leave a very, very smooth finish. Super smooth finish. 
and then it also can really get into those nooks and crannies and kind of buff out those areas that you typically wouldn't be able to get to. So I'll go through and I'll try and get these done and then I'll catch you back here in just a sec. Alright, so just real quick, uh, I wanted to show you how you kind of work these tail areas. You can see the body's nice and shiny in here, and so what we need to do is we'll just take this clay and you'll fold it a couple times, get yourself a nice uh, edge, dip that in there, and then you're just going to run it right down the tail. Just really nice, clean line. Um, and you don't have to scrub back and forth, let the clay do the work for you kind of force it in there and then just pull it and now you can see we have it nice and wet in there and then it's going to smooth it all out and that's how we've done we've gone through these tail sections as well so it looks like we're on our way to having a really great finish um, we got all the bumps out we got it straight and now I'm going to go through with some really fine tweezers I'm just going to make sure that I didn't wash out any detail um, Oh, that I didn't uh, wash out any detail in these little fins. You can see I, I added some mold releases, just some vents to let the gases out and like I said that uh, that clay is a great tip but sometimes it can gum stuff up so I'm gonna go through and just kinda clean this out a little bit here and here as well looks like it might have washed out a little bit of detail there yeah, that looks actually really nice. And you can see it, they're nice and shiny now on the inside, right where we finished them. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use that same exact West Marine epoxy to seal this up. What that should do is provide a nice even coat. This is the same exact epoxy I talked about in the open pore swim bait video. Alright guys, so we got the epoxy somewhat mixed up. Um, the bubbles have somewhat settled. Uh, this is just a makeup brush I sold from my wife. Uh, don't tell her. And so now we'll load it up, trying to push all the bubbles out of the brush so that we're not going to be brushing on bubbles. And let's go ahead and just coat these bad boys. So, And I, I try not to lay it on too thick. This stuff's pretty thin. And then just keep in mind, that's it, that's really all you need is just one little coat like that. And just brush all the way over the tail. Don't worry about that. We're going to go through and, and sand re-flatten after, um, after this is all done. So yeah, just really nice kind of cradle the grave strokes there. Alright. Well that's it. That's pretty much all the steps you're going to have to have here. Just make sure one last time. To turn your FDM molds into um, turn your FDM molds into uh, some really high quality, almost like an SLA mold. Um, I'll go ahead and shoot these when these when these dry, but for now, I mean, there's really nothing to do but kick back, drink a few beers while these dry and uh, See you in a couple hours when we shoot them. Alright, party people. So since we last spoke, uh, the epoxy is dried. It turned out pretty well. You can see you have a really nice mirror finish on it. Um, there's a couple little blemishes. You can kind of see it right there. Um, but overall it's pretty good. So just one last thing to do. We're going to go ahead, we're going to shoot it. And then um, an order just came in actually. So then we'll drop it in the... I'll load up on a couple of finesse baits and then we'll drop it in the mail and it'll be somebody else's mold. So. All right, let's go shoot. Alright, so now we have our uh, little gaggle of uh, 
swim baits, finesse baits, they turned out pretty good. Um, so I'm just going to show you how I finish them. So first things first, you got this little bit of a sprue. I use these rotaries. And I just go through and I trim them off, flip it onto the other side. Uh, that actually looks pretty good. And then uh, the other thing that you're looking at is all this little bit of flashing. And so what I do is I just hold it right here, come through with a little lighter, and you'll see it just melts right away. Oh, took a little much off on that. And that's pretty much it. So if you got like some severe flashing, maybe your mold didn't get built well, or maybe you ended up with a free mold, um, and you got some flashing, just go around, melt it down, and there we go. So let's go ahead and compare. You know, I think that appears to be time well spent. Folks, that's how to take your FDM mold and, um, you know, basically start with something that really is shooting pretty atrocious and turn it into something that's, you know, pretty darn respectable. So I think we end up with a great finish. I hope you enjoyed these tips. Get out there and catch some fish. From UncleArnie'sTackle.com, I'm Josh. Thanks for watching.